All right, today we are going to see the uh, conditional structures. Okay, the very, very important topic. If I say the conditional structures, the topic which we are going to learn today is only related to VBA, I'm wrong, because every programming language you talk about a C language, C++, Java, Python, any language you talk about, without conditional structures, there's no programming language exists. So what does it mean? Uh, that means you want to take a decision based on a certain conditions. Okay, it, will, it's, it will always happens like based on certain condition, you want to perform certain uh, uh, action. Okay, so for that, uh, the basically, if you are trying to understand the syntax, how to write in VBA, okay, if you understand perfectly, that means the same syntax, uh, when you go for any other programming language like uh, Python or Java or C, C++, what happens is you need to understand that programming language syntax and the logic is everywhere same. Okay. Every programming language intention is to write some programs so that your computer can perform certain action based on your requirement. So you need to build that logic, that logic. Before we build the logic first, I want to understand how the syntax looks like. So uh, let me insert it quickly and insert module. I'll put this module name as something like if conditions so that we can understand what we are doing. If conditions, okay, if conditions, the word itself is indicating if this condition okay meets what you want to do so the first one conditional structures so basically the conditional structure starts with okay the way first let's go to the uh, old procedure if i need to start any macro how do i do it okay i start basically with the sub okay subroutine then i'll try to give the macro name then once I say enter, I'll get the end sub. So what does it mean actually? This is a starting line of your macro. This is your end part of your macro. Within this, whatever the code you're writing, whatever the stuff you're writing, okay, whatever, whatever the program, it could be a one line, two line or 2000 lines, all these lines which you're writing between a sub and end sub, that is considered as a code, right? So this is my starting point. This is my ending point. Now in the same way, when you, are learning this uh, conditional structures uh, that also you're going to find something like a starting and ending point you need to understand clearly what is that starting point what is that ending point so let's go back to the conditional structures how to use a condition structure in order to perform certain action based on certain requirement so let's see the syntax i'm just writing the uh, syntax here if condition then what you want to do and if here the code goes. So what does it mean? This, you're always the condition starts with if condition, then ends with the end if, and in between there will be a code. And no matter, you'll definitely have this sub macro name and ends up at the bottom. Because if condition is also code, right? So which we were trying to insert within the macro and with a macro name. So this is your syntax, how it goes. Uh, let me comment this so that you can understand with an example, with an action. So whenever you see if condition, that means uh, here I need to understand what is my condition actually. What is that, that condition on which you're working based on that you want to perform certain action. Let's assume a simple uh, example in order to uh, go with the very first example to understand how this uh, if condition works. I want to check uh, by any given number, let's take uh, some some number here in the even cell. Let's say 80. I want to check this whether this 80 number is greater than is a greater number or it's a lesser number. What I mean is, if this number is uh, greater than 80, then I want to say yes, it is greater than 80. If it is not, then I want to say it is not greater than 80. Okay, whatever the condition might be, I'm just trying to ensure that how the if conditional structure works here, basically. So in order to see how this works, uh, let me start with the simple, simple if condition as in a macro name, all right? So I want to check if this cell number, whatever the cell number is there here in the A1 cell, how do I write A1 cell? I want to say range A1, dot value. So whatever even value is there that is going to be stored in this one. So 
just before i learned something called variables so we'll start using that variables also but before that a simple example to confirm whether this is greater than something or not okay so before this start the if condition this is your if which is started with and this is your going to be a condition which you want to check if it is greater than or equal to some number let's say 70 okay then okay it it's it's completely a english like kind of a syntax if this condition match then what you want to do once you say enter you'll see once you say enter you'll see you need to end that particular if condition with end if so if this end if is correct or not shall i club it or it's a single word you'll come to know once you give a space here it will turn to a blue color and a proper case. That means it is perfectly written. It's, there's no mistake in this. So if condition, if a1 dot value, what is a1 dot value? Currently a1 dot value is 80. Now that 80, I want to compare if it is greater than 70 or not. Of course it's not, but I want to see in the message box. Let's see, MSG box, I want to say yes. Okay, that's it. Now let me put some bigger number otherwise so that you can see at uh, the first condition itself is meeting then you can see how it is if if doesn't meet then how we are going to make it so here i want to see if the range a1 dot value which is right now showing as 10 is it greater than 60 or not that is what i want to check so first i'm using f8 key to go slowly and break it down into pieces to understand how this if condition really works so if a1. Here I've said A1. What is A1 here? A1 is showing 10. Is 10 is greater than 60? So it is not giving me any response because it's not condition is performed. That means the condition is not meeting. So let me give a higher number and see what happens. If A1 right now it's showing as 70, is it greater than 60? Now I should be getting a message saying that yes. Now earlier if you see the old example again i given one which is one or ten let me give some ten now i want to see if this condition met that means if this is if condition is checking whether i'm greater than 60 or not if it is condition is meeting this will go to the second line else it will directly go to the end if because the condition is not meeting i'll go back again i'm using a fight it is not going to the message message box line the reason being it's not meeting the condition what if the condition is meeting the con once a condition is meeting, which is a higher than 60, so once a condition is meeting, that is this particular cell is greater than 60 or not, it is coming to message box. So if conditions are considered to be a very faster conditions, because if, when the condition is meeting, then only it will perform that particular action and rest of the condition, it will never check. What are the rest of the conditions? I don't know because I'm just simply still working with a one simple condition. Tomorrow you may be working with multiple conditions. Just think about the Microsoft Excel formula if conditions. You'll be writing if this condition is this, then what you want to do, else what you want to do, else what you want to do. You are writing multiple conditions. Why? Because you have a multiple uh, requirements there. So here I just used a simple condition to see how it works. So let me go for the second example to find out uh, what if, if the condition is not meeting what you want to do. Because here there's no uh, significance actually. Let me make it as to something when i'm running this always i'm getting yes but what if if i don't have the number which is not greater than that i'm not getting any response okay if you see i'm not getting any response here only when the condition is meeting i'm getting the uh, response as yes or no whatever it is matching or you got the first class or the second class i'm getting some message there but when the condition is not meeting i'm not getting any message so what does it mean? For example, you received a customer call and you the customer has provided you an account number and you are trying to check that account number is existing with your database or in your records. If it is existing, you want to provide further information, maybe account balances or credit card balances or anything for that matter. What if, if the account number is not ma matching with your records, then you cannot be silent. You need to say something to the user, right? Uh, the account number is invalid. The account number is not existing. Can you provide me uh, some other information so that I can find you in my database? So that means certain more number of questions you are going to ask your customer in real life. The same way here, uh, though my uh, if condition is working fantastic, but the problem is 
when their condition is not meeting it is not giving me any response here it's simply coming out without saying anything here it is checking it is checking then it is not going here it's directly coming to end if because this condition is to be false not true here okay let's go with the next example which will say what if if the condition is not meeting okay let me put the same example here i'll copy it i'll paste it here now here as i said when the condition is not meeting i want to respond to something user so if condition starts with how the if condition starts with like single line if condition then then end if the same condition if i want to write with the else condition else condition is the uh, something like this if you get a movie ticket you want to go to a movie else what you want to do you want to do something in the day right uh, if you get a movie ticket you want to go movie if you are getting a cab you want to go to office if nothing is happening you want to sit at home so that means the first two conditions are not satisfied so you are sitting at home had it been you got a movie ticket you would have already went to a movie instead of office right so what if if you are not getting a movie ticket and you got a transport for office then you are going to office that means either you are sitting at home either you are going to a movie you are going to office so based on certain conditions you are doing in real life also you are performing some action you went to superstore uh, supermarket to buy something if that is not available you go for something else because our intention is to get something from the supermarket if that condition is not satisfied get something else so here also uh, the programming how it works is if one of the condition is not satisfying always try to provide else factor else factor in the sense if nothing is working out then what you want to do as my example i want to sit at home relax i am not going to a movie i am not going to a uh, office that's it so that means here what i want to do is here there is a one single keyword which i am going to use which going to do the magic here i am going to use else okay it's just like a english word if this condition then what you want to do okay let me write here then what you want to do so that you can add, then what do you want to do okay else then what you want to do simple condition with else factor here that is what i'm saying this is a else factor this is else that's it this is how your if condition works always try to indent the reason is it will be easy to read for anyone for that matter if i try to visit my own code after a month or one year i should be in a position to understand or read what exactly the code i've written or somebody else has written so this is what the indenting means i'm giving a space it is not mandatory if you give it looks very nice to read but it's not mandatory at all so if condition then what you want to do else what do you want to do and if that means if this condition is not satisfied do this for me if this condition is satisfied do this for me that is what i'm trying to say here let's use a uh, program name as else so that you can understand okay so as i said after your uh, first condition you need to give some else part okay i'm trying to just indent it it's not mandatory again but if you make it it's good i'm using else again you will see this else is a keyword i'm not defining it my own because it's turning into a blue color you can see blue color that means <clears throat> this is it's a keyword now here i want to say no so that means if the condition is satisfied i want to say s yes. if the condition is not satisfied i want to say no so that means always your conditional structures will be followed with else part so hope you understand how the if condition works if the condition is not satisfied then what you want to do you want to end up doing something there you want to respond to the customer can i have your account number he provided the account number to you and you are trying to search with his account number and if you found you are trying to provide some more information about your product to the customer because he is a valid customer what if if the customer is not a valid customer you want to end up saying like can i have your uh, location can i have your uh, social security number can i have some other credit card so that i can identify you as a customer so else part else part always defines what is the last situation you want to end up doing it that's what i was saying i want to sit back at relax at home if none of the condition is satisfied that is the else part so let me try to do this now uh, i'm more interested as a developer uh, having understood the logic i want to more understand how this if conditions 
in real time works actually first it is trying to check if condition if condition this value is 10 is it greater than 60 no so directly this will not this yellow color bar which i'm trying to debug now will never go to this line it will directly come to the else part it's coming to else part now then after that it is telling me no okay it's working fine now let me give a greater number like 70 now that means when i'm running this the first line is executed this is my actual code okay this is executed and once this is executed it will come out of the if condition that's it directly it came to if condition it is not checking what is the else part here as a programmer we need to understand why it is not going to the else part no i'll not go to the else part because i got a movie ticket i'll be going to the movie only i'll not be looking at the other options available okay i want to be an engineer i tried for an engineer i want to be in a, a mbbs i applied everywhere so whichever the option i'm getting i'll try to join there if i'm getting engineering seat i'll join the engineering set so i'll be not looking for the other options because either of the thing is okay for me so first i'm checking for engineering i didn't get i'm looking for a mbps i didn't get it else i want to do a management course something like mba so that's my else part so the first two conditions are not satisfied here so the same case here if you talk about the real type example here the condition is satisfied so it is coming out so as a developer you need to understand how it is working okay the syntax is quite simple if i'm giving a lesser number let's say i'm trying to check it's coming to directly the else part All right, so here I was trying to use a message box just to understand what is my output. What if, if I don't want to use a message box, I want to perform that action here. Okay, maybe in the B1 cell, I want to give the output. Here I want to say underscore range, maybe. Here instead of uh, displaying on message box, because I'm using a message box because I learned last week, I know how to use it now. Uh, instead of using a message box, I want to use something called range b1 dot value equal to greater okay uh, let's say s and let's say this as no it's all about logic how you want to do it now when i'm running this i don't want to display on a message box anymore though it's quite interesting uh, the user has to keep pressing enter enter instead of that let's try to display on your excel screen itself so if the condition is matching it will print on your b1 cell rather than on the message box if the condition is not matching let's say this is 80 this time i should not be getting no rather i should be getting s so that means i'm able to perform the same job on the excel now so this is what we learned in the very first week i said it's very important now now we are going to use in every example the range range a1 b1 c1 nothing but you are talking about you are targeting about a particular cell on the excel screen itself so this is one way of printing okay uh, printing to the user and uh, this is one way and this is a second way second way in the sense you want to print the output on the excel itself let's assume there is a lot of series of numbers here okay there are a lot of series of numbers uh, let's think uh, there is uh, some 80 this is 100 this is 20 this is 30 when you want to check this uh entire line okay this is what happens in the real world because uh, i haven't reached to that level but i'm just trying to give an example here uh, this is 80 is it greater than this number 60 yes uh, is this uh, greater than 60 yes i should be getting a response as yes this is also s yes. this is also s yes. this is no because it's not greater uh, is this s yes. yes 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 this is also s yes. s yes what if, if i want to perform this kind of action because right now being you are just taking the baby steps in learning how to use the if conditions uh, now how to reach to that level of uh, understanding i have uh, 12 people i have 12 people 12 uh, uh, student marks we have and you want to grade them whether they passed or failed but i haven't reached to that place because we are just sitting at the first stage of whether to uh, how to use the if condition itself by itself so All right, having seen how to display on the uh, Excel, how to display on the message box, now it's a time to just move on to the next level of adding some elements because last week I remember how to use, how to use all my uh, variables, okay? I want to use the variables concept. 
I want to use my input box concept. I want to use my uh, message box. I want to use all the combinations. I want to move slowly so that I can even create the complex projects for myself. So let me go for the next example, sub. Uh, if condition underscore, then I want to say, uh, let's use a variable first. Then we'll slowly move on to this using of input box. Then you'll understand the core concept here. So first uh, you're talking about the if conditions uh, and along with the combination of variables. Here, whenever I'm asking a number from the user, obviously it's a number, right? It is not a string. So that means I need to declare something called dim. Let's say a for just like uh, for fun, uh, a as a variable as, then I want to say integer. Now what is a as integer? A is going to hold some number called 80, let's assume. Okay, now what I want to see, uh, try to uh, have a closer look, try, we will try to go through this example again and again because based on that, there are a lot of examples laid down. At the same time, your project, whatever the project you develop and all the projects goes with the same lines. He, here I'm saying, okay, let me run till here. I want to see the magic what happens actually. Here A e stands for zero because A is not assigned with anything. When I cross this line, it is telling A is nothing but 80. That is what it is trying to confirm me, okay? So that means my A number is holding 80. So that means, can I say if A is greater than or equal to uh, uh, some 70, then I want to do something called, let me use a message box only for time being. Message box, I want to say S. Yes. I want to say S. Yes else message box here I want to say no so what is the difference we need to notice here how I'm trying to change the code with a minimal difference here okay so here I'm trying to use if range e1 dot value here here instead of using that particular big sentence or the syntax now what I'm doing the magic is I'm trying to put that entire thing into a variable called e Okay, let me run this. If A is value is 80, this 80 is greater than 70, it can never be. Yes. Okay, it is message saying it's yes. So that means yes. So let me make this 18 to now 10 something. Now when I'm running this, if A is 10, this 10 is greater than 70, now it's directly going to the message box. So that means the variable, we can use a, a variable in place of this entire syntax. Now I'm trying to identify this entire syntax through a variable called, whatever the variable here, I just use the, you can use anything. Now let me move on to the next level of writing the same syntax with some more changes I'm using as underscore one because the macro name can never be same. Here I want to use instead of 10, okay, let me not delete this, I'll comment this, okay. This time I want to say range a1 dot value. That means whatever is the number in this, please store in a variable called a and try to perform the job on that. So let me try to do that. Now, what is a stands for? I don't know. Earlier I provided manual year 10, but this time I'm not providing what is a, whatever is there in the a1 cell, that is your a. So it is comparing, yes. Okay, it's coming out. Now let me make this 80 to 10. Now, now my A will become 10. That A is being compared with 70. If it is matching, fine. If it is not matching, it is going to the else part. Okay, so that's how I just transformed. Uh, instead of uh, giving a static number here, I used a range because the end user will not come to your code and give my marks are 80, my marks are 70. He will not provide here. Probably he is going to provide on the Excel screen my marks are in this particular subject is 80. So on that 80, you want to perform that job, whether you are meeting the criteria, first class, second class, or third class, whatever. So this is how slowly you just improved. Now let me try to make it the input. Now you'll understand how to use the input box. So in these two examples we have seen, in the first example I have seen, uh, this is a bad way of writing, I can say, because you have written the entire range. Here we are trying to use a variable, okay? Here we are trying to use same variable, but the thing is you are assigning the Excel screen to your variable, Excel screen of A1 cell, not every cell, but A1 cell. Now here, this time I don't want to depend upon Excel screen. I don't want to depend upon uh, the static number here. Instead, what I want to do is, 
I want to use a different methodology called input box. So let me uh, first try to understand how to write an input box. Uh, please enter your number. Okay. I said, please enter your number. When I'm running this, it works fantastically. I said 80, but what is happening here? Is it checking? It's not checking. It is not at all checking because your input box, whatever the number is entered, it is not stored anywhere, right? So we need to store that number. So let me say A equal to, that means always your variable will be at the left side and the right side, what you want to assign. The same way, just go back. Don't look at this input box now. Just look at this one. A is a variable and this is what you are assigning. A is a variable. This is what you are assigning. At this time, I'm trying to assign the input box itself. That means whatever the user is entering in the input box, let me show you practically here. Right now, it is not showing anything because nobody has entered anything. So let me enter 100. Now, A become 100. A is being compared with 70. A is greater than 70, yes. So I got the answer. So that means now it's perfectly working. I'm using this, I said 10. I should be getting a message called no. If I'm running again, I'm, uh, I'm specifying 80. Is it matching? Yes, it's matching. Again, I'm running. I'm saying some 200. Obviously, it is greater than 70. So I should be getting yes. So now I'm in a position to use input box because I know the combination of using variables, which I learned in the last week. Before that, I understood how to use the input box and the message box. So here the concept is declaring the variables. I used a variable. I used assigning that variable to a value. I even used the input box. I even used the message box. And here the A stands for the way you used here, that is your range e one dot value. Instead of that, you are now you are putting everything into a variable called a. So that's how we can take the information from the user to validate, to validate and check. Let's take a, a practical example here. You are asking, can you please enter your account number? Something like this. You ran this, and the user is entering his account number. Something like this. If it is matching, then you want to get into his records. If it is not matching, you want to prompt the user, please enter the correct account number. Okay, so that's how you are going to use this particular uh, combination in the real scenario. But again, uh, I'm not still fully understood this concept. The reason is, now, if I want to check some thousands of records, it's not possible for me right now because there is a concept coming up that is loops. If you know the loops, you can use this loops and if condition combination and you can start developing any project. Trust me, you can start developing any project because if condition looks handicapped without the loops, the loops is the next concept. Because uh, so far, if you observe, I've been using this, I've been using this, but uh, I, I, I keep talking, if you guys observe, I keep talking about only one cell because I don't know how to work on other cells also. If I have some 10 cells, let's assume 10 rows rather, I have 10 rows. I want to check each student marks. I want to put the output here, which is not possible here. Okay, because I have if condition here, I have no loops, loops in the sense looping into each particular cell. So that means I want to check what is the first number and I want to give the result. I want to check, okay, this is 60. Then I want to give the output. Okay, this is 40. Then I want to give the output. So that means when I want to do a repeated job like this, I want to keep looking, keep looking and you want to perform the job. In that case, you need to use the loops along with your if conditions, that is conditional structures. Zoom recording. All right, so being a developer, I am not in a hurry in giving the output at the Excel screen because I'm still in developing of my product. So that means you need to do several testings before you actually hand over to your end user or to anyone for that matter. Once you complete your job, you are giving to someone else. You are not working on that anymore. So here, what I want to do is uh, instead, let me take any example here. So let me copy this and put it here. Let me show you how many ways of output. Okay, so let me remove this. Let me also remove this. Just an example how to, okay, this is one way we have seen how to give your response on your message box. Let me see, is there any other way? Yes, of course we have. That is the range uh, B1. That's what we have seen already, value equal to, I want to say S. Okay, why I'm writing twice actually, it's not required, but just uh, for us to understand what are the options available. Okay, so if I run this, 
uh, if it is greater than uh, 70, then I want to print a message box. At the same time, I want to print the value S here. Right now, already S is there. So let me remove. Uh, it's printing S. Okay. So let me say this now, uh, smallest number, maybe 10. Now I'm running this. Message box S. I'm getting S also. Okay. So not, uh, let's say 10 here. Now I'm printing message box as no. In the B1 cell, I'm putting as no. So that means it's working, right? So that means I have ability of providing the output to the end user in the form of message boxes or in the form of Excel. But as a developer, uh, before I actually print out something to the Excel, I want to see uh, whether it's really working or not. So how do I check? Uh, how do I check? So we have an option called debug.print. Okay, there is an option called debug.print. Debug.print is nothing but a separate floating window. Okay, uh, a separate floating window, which will show you the output before you actually show on your screen. Okay, this is just like a testing for the developers. We more often as a developers, we have to use this option. So let me go for a view because there's one more window which you are trying to understand. Okay, uh, one more window which you are understanding that is immediate window. So you can also use control G. It's a floating window actually. Now the question is what is the advantage of it? Because already I have an Excel screen where I can display the output. What this uh, immediate window will do? Let's see. So here this immediate window will help you before you actually print out some output to the Excel screen, I want to see whether it's working or not. So I need to use debug. Okay, that's a statement we cannot avoid. There's no, uh, we have to uh, follow this rule. Debug.print, then you want to say yes. Okay, so debug.print, yes. I want to say no as well here in the screen. So that means I am trying to check as a developer whether it's working or not because I've just started my programming. I'm not sure if it is working or not. So this is how I check if it is working, then I want to replace. So let me see, uh, F8, 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 else part is going to else part in the debug.print, I'm printing no. So this is a output window, which end user will never, never see in his life. End user will never see in his life. It is only for us because I want to see, okay, it's working. Now I understood this, this my program is perfectly working. Then what I will do is I replace all this debugs, okay, with range or the message, whatever you want. So it's basically to check how your output is really behaving when you really actually print out some output to the Excel screen. So uh, that's not only the reason why we use a uh, uh, input uh, immediate window. For example, if you, if you want to know uh, I want to know the time. So it's not this. Okay. Now active workbook dot name. Okay. Let me come to that example later, but this is how we are going to use this, uh, uh, debug.print uh, before you actually print out your screen you want to see the output if it is working fine then you want to move on to the next one so there are the three ways here i'll come to the immediate window again uh, we'll try to have a big story based on one example this is not the right place so uh, one is a message box one is a range one is a debug.print we, we can use either of the thing but the last one is not for the end user please this is only for the developer because the uh, end user will never see the output on the debug. First of all, you will never get into that screen until unless he goes to this particular uh, uh, Visual Basic editor, right? So you'll not get a chance. So that's about uh, using the different option. Now let's move on to the next example, uh, trying to make things a little complicated so that we can understand more about the if conditions. Uh, I am not going to leave the if conditions until we understand this because I want to add some more elements into this. Now let me say sub if condition with else if condition. Okay, so far I'm really, really good. I'm understanding the concept. Uh, there is a simple if condition, there is an else condition also. But what if, if you have a multiple conditions? That is what we do basically in Excel, right? Uh, when we are trying to use a, a, a Excel formula that is if condition, we always try to check multiple if conditions. That means if this is matching, then what do you want to do? If this is matching, then what do you want to do? So in the same concept in the VB or any other programming language, if you want to check that condition multiple times, okay, we have 
else if condition let's see the syntax first if condition then what you want to do okay what then you are using else part here then what then we are using end if so this is a basically syntax what i just learned and i'm very clear about this but now what is the new concept we are telling it's not a new concept actually what i'm going to speak now it is even in a general life uh, if one of the condition is not satisfied i want to go to the second condition if the second condition is not satisfied i want to go to the third condition if the third is not satisfied i want to go to the fourth condition that means even in the real time or in our uh in a work environment you'll always find some multiple conditions you are asking a customer can i have your account number the account number is invalid so you are asking do you have a credit card number that is also invalid can i have your complete full name so i'm asking several questions in order to arrive to uh, if the customer is a valid customer or not so how to do that let's see here instead of using uh this is only one condition right so if i want to use one more condition what i will do is simply i'm just following the syntax i'm not using my brain i'm using else if condition so that means else condition then what you want to do so that means this is a one two conditions here this is a one condition this is a second condition so the first condition always starts with the syntax called if the second condition will starts with else if else if the word english statement else if if not that what else if you want to do okay so else is what the last part nothing is satisfied in your life so what you want to do at the at the last stage that is what the else part saying so what if you have a one more condition no matter you can use a again else if what if you have a one more condition else if so simply i'm trying to break down the if condition simple condition else part now i'm trying to include all started learning how to use a else if condition else if condition is one more condition so this is how your syntax goes all right having seen the uh, else if condition that means uh, if the con first condition is not satisfied then you want to check the second condition second condition is not satisfied then you want to check for the third condition third condition is not satisfied you want to go for the fourth condition fourth condition is also not satisfied so you want to go for the last option available last option available okay that is your last option so these are the primary uh, conditions which you want to see do you have your uh, what is your account number okay it's not valid uh, can i have your credit card number that is also not valid can i have your social security number that is also not valid can i have your spouse name or your full name that is also not satisfied else you want to tell boss you are not the right customer to my bank or uh, anything for that matter you want to put a else condition nothing is valid please recheck your account number or whatever you want to say else part the last stage now let me bring on to the example here uh, the same uh, example we will try to go for uh, to see whether he is uh, uh, marks example that is the best example we can take in order to understand this control structures so for this uh, let me just draw a picture how it looks like actually i want to say if uh, if you get a percentage of uh, 80 marks let's assume if your marks is greater than 80 then we'll call it as uh, you have uh, you got a greater than greater okay it is greater than 80 you got okay for example if you if it is your 60 then you want to say yes you got 60 i'm not giving any grades here just want to understand the condition then i'll slowly move on to the grades so that you can understand here i want to check if it is greater than 50 then i want to say yes it is greater than 50 so that means i'm trying to check multiple conditions i want to check if it is 40 then yes it is a 40 okay then i want to move on to the 30 then greater than 30 if nothing is matching so i want to say at the end not matching so that means uh, probably the end user or the student who is trying to input some numbers into the excel screen uh, probably is not given the right number so it's not falling under any of the category is it it's not might be 80 it might, might be 60 or uh, 50 40 30 so probably i'm giving the end result is not matching so let's see this example uh, let's go very slowly to understand this uh, factor because this example we are going to use further all right so first i am going to declare some some kind of a variable because i need a variable which can store all these marks okay so i'm saying dim uh, let's say as a marks only as a variable name i can give it's my wish uh, because i'm 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 following the rules here there is no space uh, there is no uh, special character 
uh, it can be lower case or upper case doesn't matter so i'm following the rules it's my wish i can give any name so i'm trying to give such variable name which is uh, apt for my example so you can give anything you can give your name also but make no sense because you are writing a program and you are giving your name there rather you try to give such variable name which is really really identifying that or giving some importance to the program so dim marks as obviously you want to give as an integer because all the marks are going to be the uh, number format it's not a string format so that's a left side you can see this is my example uh, this is where i want to start building you can see how easy it is building a logic based on this one okay so first i want to see marks 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 equal to you want to assign a value so you want to assign a value either input box maybe input box i want to say enter your number that is the first method second method is marks equal to 10 that is the second method you are assigning a static value always so that means always the 10 is being compared the next one is marks you can also say range a1 dot value guys we are not going to use all the three methods here the intention of these three lines is which way you want to accept the number from the user you want to take from the input box you want to take as a static number you want to take as a uh, from the excel screen so there are the three options this option is very bad the reason is you are putting a static number there but sometimes it is also good because if you know uh, the pass percentage is always uh, i mean if you want to get a first prize is always 60 is a static number you can put a 60 there okay if your 50 is a second class then you can make it as a 50 as a static number but in real time i always believe you try to use your excel screen as a input source where the user is entering based on that you want to do the comparison or else you can take the input box that is you are taking the information from the user that is the first one so either use use this one either use this one either use this one so let us try to use all the options one by one not the three at once uh, because any one you can use not all so here uh, now i know uh, the marks are here something like let's say this is 10 i got now i'm still in the single cell you need to understand the factor because i don't know the loops right now i'm learning if condition had it been if i know the loops the next concept my life is going to become easier uh, i can achieve anything for that matter because if condition only work has the limitations of working for one cell or second cell but not to multiple cells because if today i have a 10 students tomorrow 10000 students my if condition doesn't work i need to use a combination of loops there all right having said that let me go to the if condition now i know how to write the if condition now it's quite easy if marks okay marks is greater than or equal to 80 greater than or equal to 80 then what you want to do i want to do a simple job i want to write in the range a1 uh, b1 maybe b1 dot value equal to i'm simply writing greater than 80 nothing else this will clearly demonstrate how to use the multiple if conditions at this okay hope you are able to see the full screen now this is your condition now i can say finally uh, because i don't have multiple conditions i want to say range and no matching that's it this is this is what i was learning but i want to do some mistake here let's see what kind of error i'm going to get uh, i'm going i'm sure i'm going to get an error here when i'm run this it is telling me something very beautifully and trying to explain you very clearly there is something is missing that is block if without end if it is telling me you have written the if condition uh, very nice but you missed out something that is called end if so if you miss something your vba editor always keep reminding you with the nice errors there is no need to write down the list of errors no need to remember just go with the uh, while you are writing the program you can see the compile error that means it is telling me there is a error you started with the if but there is no end if that means it is mandatory that means we need to give end if okay you can never forget that if then end if in between that it's optional again uh, you want to use the else if or else condition so this is the last condition in this i just learned else if condition so let me use else con uh, else if condition here here i am saying if if again instead of if i need to say else if 
Is it else if is a keyword? Yes, of course, because it's turning into a blue color else if condition. Here I want to say this time, uh, what is the next number I've given? 60. So let's say a 60 here. Now here you want to say 60, something like that. Just for fun, I'm doing this because I want to learn how to use our multiple if conditions here. This is uh, something called 70. This is 70. This is 60. Here I want to say 70 here. Here I want to say 60. Then again, I want to copy this. See, uh, it looks like you're writing a very big program, but while writing it's so easy. Uh, I've written one line, I'm copying and pasting and just doing what I want. So this is a 50 and this is a 50 here. And I'm copying again. This is 40. You can make it more complicated to say yourself you've written a very big code but actually this is not a big code. You are just trying to check the conditions and you want to perform as job. Now let's bring on to this entire program which I've written within no time because I know how to write code. No, I know the syntax. I know the syntax. That's the only fact here. It's not that I'm a master in this. I've been working since ages. No, I know how to write the syntax. I know how to use the else if and I know what is my intention of my program. I want to check if it is greater than that. I want to display something. That's a simple thing which I'm trying to do. So here we need to have some number. I have 10 number. So let's I intentionally given the lowest number to see how it is working. Uh, all right. So when I'm running this, as you already have seen on the Excel screen, it is 10. So let me just make it full screen to understand this. First, I'm checking marks. Marks is 10. How do I know it is 10? Because in the range even whatever you entered, it will show in your variable. Okay, your marks is 10, marks is 10. Here the marks is 10 because you stored in a range A1. If I change this 10 to 20, now if I restart my program again, you'll be finding, you'll be finding marks as 20 and it's been checking as a marks as is 20, okay? Sorry. So uh, here what happens is we are trying to check the marks else if condition. Your marks has been 20. It's been compared to 70, which is not right. And it is not going to this line. If you observe, if I use F8 key, it is going directly to this condition. That means I repeat this. Uh, let me hide this. Stop it. I'm checking this if condition. It is tell. It is trying to understand what is my variable value. Okay, 20. This 20 is being compared and it is not checking this value. I mean, it is not checking the code what is there. If the condition is not matching, it is not matching. Of course, it should go to the else if. That means it will go to the else if condition. Then again, it will go to the else if condition, else if condition, else if condition, else if condition. Nothing is working out. So it will simply print as not matching because nothing is matching, right? So what happens is the if condition is so intelligent, whenever the condition is matching at the first level itself, it will print your output or it will perform your action. It will not come to, it will not go to other conditions. It will not even bother to check. It will not even bother to check. It will only check if the condition is matching that immediately it will print out. So let me see practically again, I'm giving 100. So that means my first condition itself is going to match now. Uh, marks is 100. Now marks is 100 being compared with 80. My first condition is matched. That means I should be getting some number here. Uh, B1 value is greater than 80. Now, if you look at my program has already reached to the end if without looking at all these values. So that's the beauty of this uh, condition structures. Whenever it checks the condition is becomes true, that means it will not check the rest of the conditions. That's how beautifully if condition is designed in every programming language. So it's not wasting your time. It is checking if it is working, then fine. It will not go to other conditions, it will directly come out of this particular uh, entire program. That's how it really works in the real time. All right, we have seen uh, uh, multiple uh, conditions here. That is a previous example, uh, how to use the else if. That means we are not always end up having one condition. So I'm trying to bring on to that level of understanding how to use a multiple condition in order to perform any condition uh, output to be displayed based on the requirement. So uh, we have learned the message boxes, but I failed to show you an example how to access those buttons. If you remember, let me uh, write this message box with if condition. 
okay so i said a mess message box and i'm writing something called click here so just like that please select i'm using vb yes no cancel buttons i'm running it now when i run this uh, obviously i'm getting a message box without writing much lines of code but i don't know when i click on no nothing is happening okay when i'm clicking on yes i'm nothing is happening when i'm clicking on cancel nothing is happening so that means uh, there is nothing code beyond it uh, which will tell me uh, what to do when you click on yes what to do when you click on no what to do when you click on cancel in the last week session i failed to show you that example because that time i don't know how to use the if conditions now i know how to use the if conditions so if i want to perform based on the selection some action uh, how to use this message box let's see uh, so first i want to declare some variable here dim okay uh, let's say some integer m as integer something m stands for message box something like that okay or msg maybe so here uh, whatever the message box you declared that msg has to be assigned to something right so i'm using msg equals to when i say here i'll be end up getting an error accepted statement that means without using a mess uh, variable i'm able to work silently i'm getting the message box being we are assigning message box to something a variable i need to enclose in open and closing parenthesis very simple just opening and closing parenthesis so that i'll not be getting any now when i click on s now i want to see in the message box what is stored okay yes stands for six okay something funny numbers you'll get when i say no that means what message box is storing is seven okay now let me write here six stands for for s seven stands for no in the same way when i'm running cancel i'm getting some number called uh, two i don't know how randomly they have given the numbers two stands for cancel as a human it's quite impossible to remember the numbers uh, s stands for six no stands for seven cancel stands for two it's it's quite impossible to remember or to make somebody also make understand uh, six is always yes okay seven is always no two is always cancel so let me rewrite this syntax but before that let me use the same style what six seven two which is microsoft defined so i want to say if msg equals to six that means what if the user is selecting six nothing but selecting s then you want to say in the range nothing but on the excel screen you want to display or you want to display on the message box or you want to display on the debug doesn't matter i'm using a range it could be anything in the a1 in the a1 cell i want to display saying that you have selected what you have let's say you have selected yes then at the same time uh, as i have a multiple conditions here that is uh, we have a yes uh, we have a no we have a cancel so it's quite obvious that we need to use else if condition here right so let's use else if msg equal to 7 which we know that stands for no it stands for no so the last condition that means just imagine in practically when the user is clicking on yes it's fine if he's clicking on no it's fine if he is not clicking either yes or no that means he is clicked on cancel only right so that i can put in the else condition that is the last condition in the else part i want to write okay you are not selected anything let's say you are selected cancel okay and if i run obviously i'll get into errors because something is really important thing missing that is your end if so i need to use end if condition here so let's see how it works um let me bring on my excel screen here okay let me remove this let me make it bigger so that you can see the entire text okay i'm running now uh, in the msg uh, i selected no i should be getting directly first it is checking is it this guy has selected no or is i don't know so that means uh, he selected no so no stands for seven this seven is being compared with six which is not correct so that means this will not be displayed it will come to here it will check the second condition is it seven am i seven yes so that means i should be getting a result called that you have clicked something called no yeah 
So that means if next time when I select no, uh, yes, for example, that means he's trying to check this six is six, yes. So that means it's telling me that you have selected yes. Okay, so in the same way, if I'm not selecting either yes, no, anything, the last option is cancel left. So I'm selecting cancel, it is checking this cancel is nothing but we already know that two is the number message box. Two is this compared, no. Is this compared with seven, no. So that means nothing is comparable. So let me come back and say, sit back, relax at home. That is the last option, right? So you have selected cancel. So that means the last option we are selecting cancel here. So very, very simple uh, because I could able to write this example very quickly. The reason being, I know how to write the syntax of if condition with a multiple options that is else if condition. Though we have a three button, so I use only one, uh, two conditions here, one, and this is two. And the last is always the else part, like if you don't want to do anything, then what do you want to do? So six is, that's what I was saying, uh, numeric numbers, uh, it's not easy to remember. So I have a one more option. Uh, VB has uh, provided one more option for that matter. Uh, uh, for anyone, for, a, for example, if I write six here tomorrow, when you are referring also, you will not understand until unless when you see these comments here. But is there any other way? We have another way. Instead of using six, which stands for, which stands for S, we can use simply VB yes. It's turned into a camel case. That means it's a perfect keyword. Instead of using this seven, I want to use VB no. Okay. Let me see VB no. I'm writing in uppercase. Doesn't matter because when I come out of that line, after completing that line, it will turn into its own case. Right. VB yes. Else I'm not writing. You can also write VB cancel, but I'm not writing because none of the condition is satisfied. Obviously it will come to a cancel option. It doesn't mean that you cannot write a else, else if condition you can write here. I'm not stopping to write this else condition by saying VB cancel. Okay, here you are saying cancel here. So the last else part is always optional. You can also use the else if condition. But if you think practically, for me, there's no need to write this else if part at the last. You can simply avoid writing so many lines and put simple else condition there. So let me run this again. Uh, running this, running this. I've selected cancel this time. Uh, it's checking. Is message box is comparable to this? No. Is this message box is comparable to this? No. This is comparable to this? No. It is comparable to this? Yes. So I'm getting the message as, uh, let me make it, yeah. So now I'm getting the message as cancel. So let me run again, rerun to check whether it's working or not. It's checking this condition, yes. Now I'm getting no. So that means, it is trying to work as a developer. Our concentration should be not just on our output, rather to see how quickly it is able to understand our my message and able to uh, give the output here. So this is how to work on a message box, either use the numbers if you are good at remembering the numbers, but I am not good at that. I want to remember with simple keywords like VBS stands for, you clicked on S. VB no stands for can uh, no. VB cancel is cancel. So last part I've been repeating again. For me, there's no need to write the condition again. Here I'm writing a condition. Why to write a condition here actually? Uh, you can avoid it. Let me copy these two lines. I'll try to show you in a two ways here. I'm just removing this. I'm putting this. I'm removing this condition also. I'm putting like directly. So that means here I'm putting the condition here without condition. Last condition, there is no need to mention at all because by default is if you're not selecting either first, second, that means you are selecting the last option only. That is what the understanding here, else part. 